Well, good morning. I'm standing here in my driveway, and as hopefully you can see, I got my driveway lined with uh, sweet gum trees. They're really pretty trees. And recently I've been thinking I'd like to get some information on my trees, uh, the, their size. I planted them quite a few years ago, and I'm kind of curious on how well they're doing, how they're growing. So I, <laughs> I don't think I want to try to measure their height. They're all pretty, pretty tall now. So what I'd like to do is simply just find out how big around their trunk is. And I've decided to, let's take a walk here. I've decided to measure the, the circumference of the trunk and to be consistent, I'm gonna to try to do it approximately waist height. So let me come around here and then we, let me pick this tree right here, for example. And hopefully you can see that tree. And I'm going to go up here to about waist height. And I'm gonna measure around the trunk And to the nearest inch, that was 28 inches. So let me write that down. This is tree number three. I've numbered them one through 17. And tree number three had a circumference in the trunk of about 28 inches. Let's do one more here. And we're going to walk over to this tree. And once again, at about waist height. To the nearest nearest inch this one is also 28 inches okay so you don't need to watch me this is tree number four you don't need to watch me measure all these trees uh, let me get them measured and I'll get back with you well here I am in my office now and as you can see in front of you you should be seeing the information I collected from measuring the circumference of each of the trees uh, as, as I mentioned before, I numbered the trees. Actually, I miscounted. I thought I had 17 trees. I've actually got 18 trees. So I've measured it from 1 to 18, and I've got them each numbered. And below the number of each tree, I have written the circumference. So for the first tree, it turns out to be its circumference was, number, was uh, 11 inches. The second tree was 20 inches. And remember, I actually had on the, 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 the video of measuring tree and four, and they were both 28. So as you can see, here, here are the values that I got, and we'll be using this information. Now, what, what exactly do I want to do with information? Well, I, I want to see, in general, overall, what, what the size of the trees are in terms of their circumference. So to get an overall idea, I want to see what the distribution of these trees' circumferences looks like as a group. So I'm going to create a frequency distribution table. Now, my, my pen kind of ran together a little bit. You probably can't read this. This first column of this frequency distribution table says it's going to be the circumference classes. Hopefully you've read enough in the text you understand that a frequency distribution table is made up of two columns. One column is the classes, and the other column is the frequency. This, the classes over here are going to be different ranges of inches, representing the circumferences. And I will place each of these values, from the information got from my trees, each of these circumference values as a tick mark on here, depending on where it falls on the classes. So really, the first thing we have to do is determine what the what the size of the classes should be. And here's how we determine that. The class size, if I can spell it right, size is equal to the largest value minus the smallest value in my set of data, all divided by the number of classes that I desire. Well, how many classes do we want? That's a good question. I was thinking that I would like five classes. Now, that, that number is pretty arbitrary, and it can range anywhere from 5 to 10 to 15, even 20. You've got a huge 
uh, a huge population that you're drawing from. But since I only have 18 trees, I thought five classes should be plenty big. So if we look at the data here, we see that the smallest tree was my very first tree, not tree number one, and it circum its circumference was 11 inches. And then notice tree number seven has a circumference of 41. That was the biggest one. So let's come over here now and figure the class size. The class size is going to be equal to the largest, 41, minus the smallest one, which is 11. And since I decided arbitrarily wanted five classes, we'll divide this by five. So this becomes 30 divided by five, which is six. Now, whenever this comes out to be uh, a number in between two whole numbers, we would always round this up to the next whole number. Whenever this comes out to be exactly a whole number, we still want to move this up to the next whole number. So we're going to take this up to 7. So we're going to say the size of my classes is 7. That is 7 inches. Now, something you really, really need to understand before we get started here is that when I say that, for example, tree number 3, which you watched me measure, has a circumference of 28 inches, what that really means is I rounded that to the nearest inch. So the actual circumference of that tree was something between 27 and a half and up to 28 and a half. I don't remember what it was. I just rounded it to 28. Same thing with tree number 13. Uh, I've got 34 inches, but it actually was something between 33 and a half inches and 34 and a half inches. So we're always rounding here. This type of data, once again, as we've studied before, this is continuous data. These values, actual measurements, can, can cover the whole gamma of the range, making it continuous data. And I've simply rounded it to the nearest inch.